down. <coughs> One, two, three. <laughs> okay. So good morning, everyone. So we are from Group K. My name is Wong Chu Hing, and Lin Inchi, Raymond Wong, and Mohammad Zohumi is my teammates. So topic today we will talk about the hydropower energy. So hopefully everyone can lend me your ears so that you can benefit from it. So next, please. Okay, this is the basic components of the hydroelectric power. So you can see uh, from the upstream, there will be a Swiss gate over there normally, and then it will come to the pen stocks. So the function of the pen stocks will be navigate the upstream water to the turbines. So turbine is the place where generating the power output. So normally turbine will be coupled to the generator and then generator will be producing a, an, an synchronized electric okay electric and then after that the water will flow through to the downstream outlet okay so normally there are two things uh consider you need to consider in the hydropower hydro electric power which is uh, high, uh water flow rates and heads and then the heads they will be categorized in two things uh mainly so the one first one is the Net head and the net, uh, and the net, another one will be the gross head. So next one, please next slide, please. So this is the hydropower generation scheme. So start from the pico to large. Uh, you can see that there will be the capacity over there. Normally, the capacity shows the uh, power can be generated by the power plant. Uh. So mini uh, normally for the mini hydro will be used for the rural area. So the larger the largest in the Malaysia is the uh at the Bakun. So that one is considered as a medium, uh, uh considered as a large one. Okay, next please. So this is the formula. Eh? Oh, this is the formula normally used for calculating the power. So pH equals to rho gh q. So this one normally is the input power. La. So the next one will be the mechanical power, which is uh, torque time the angular velocity. So to calculating the efficiency, you can use the power output divided by power input. So as shown as the figure below. Next, please. Oh, I think this part will be uh, presented by, by members. So I will pass to my members. Thank you. Okay, hello. Thank, thank you, uh, Chubin. So for now, I'm going to present about the turbine. So the hydraulic turbine converts the energy of flowing water into mechanical energy. A hydroelectric generator converts this mechanical energy into electricity. So when a magnet is moved past the conductor, it causes electricity to flow. Uh, in a large generator, Electromagnets are made by circulating direct currents through loops of wire pulled around stacks of uh, magnetic steel lamination. These are called fuel poles and are mounted on the perimeter of the rotor. So the rotor is attached to the turbine shaft and rotates at fixed speed. When the rotor turns at the upper part, you can see when the rotor turns, uh, it causes a uh, fuel poles or the electromagnets to move past the conductors mounted in the stepper. This uh, in turn will cause uh, electricity to flow and a voltage to develop at the generator output terminals. Next slide. So, so these are some of the examples of turbine used in the hydropower plant. These are uh, patent turbine, Kaplan turbine, and Francis turbine. Most of the hydropower plant in Malaysia use, are using Francis turbine. Next slide. So these are some of the pros and cons of the hydro energy. The advantage of uh, hydro energy, the first one is renewable. Hydro energy does not consume any water. It uses water, but it does not consume any water. So it does not reduce the amount of water that is available for future use. The second one is sustainable. This form of energy does not affect the amount of water that is available for future use, as mentioned just now. 
So uh, it is just as much as a variable source of uh, energy for the current generation as it is for the future one. Uh, the third one is uh, employment generation. So the generation of uh, hydro energy creates employment opportunities in two phases, the, the construction of them and the operation of them. So the construction of them is a long process. It takes years and is done on a large scale. Uh, therefore, it allows uh, hundreds of workers to be employed for the construction of the dam and for the transportation of the construction material. Uh, secondly, while the dam is operational, there is staff required to operate the machines for the maintenance, for cleaning the premise, and etc. This also provides job opportunities for many people. So the last one is flexible. A major advantage of a hydropower plant is that uh, its generation is a completely controllable process. This allows the operators of them to control the flow of water as needed. When uh, low energy output is needed, the flow of water can be slow. Uh, additionally, it also makes repairs easy. If one of the turbines needs to be repaired, uh, water flow can be stopped until it is fixed, which also ensures that the turbine is not damaged further. So now we're going to proceed to the disadvantage of the hydro energy. So the first disadvantage is displacement. Dams requires the entire volume of a water body to be stored in a relatively smaller area. This leads to flooding in nearby areas. Hence, the communities are living, uh, the communities living in or around the areas where the dams are constructed need to leave their homes or relocate to far off places. Given that these dams are usually constructed in, uh, in or near the forest, the communities displaced are often the the tribe the tribal communities the orang asli or the orang ulu so these people have the cultural attachment to the places that they live in and uh, they do not have the resources to properly relocate making it more difficult so the next one is destruction of wildlife uh, reservoir of hydro energy plants uh, flood nearby area this does not just affect the human life it also has huge impact on wildlife around the plant. Uh, many animals are drowned and the others are forced to leave their uh, natural habitats, therefore endangering their species. The third disadvantage is impact on marine life. Just now, we talked about destruction of wildlife if those are on the land. Now we're going to talk about those are live in the uh, water. So the way that the hydropower is generated, it changes the flow of water. Uh, this changes the quality of water as well. It also impacts the marine life that uh, live in the particular water. There are various of factors that affect the marine habitat, such as the water level, the water velocity, the shelter opportunities, and the excess of food. Hydropower plants change all of these. So the last disadvantage is the, high, the cost. The hydro energy is one of the most expensive form of renewable energy. It involves the construction of large-scale plants. Moreover, given the uh, large cost involved and the environmental impact of the construction of this plant, stopping the usage of this energy at a particular plant is also not an option. Next. So now I will pass it to my groupmate to present the next slide. Okay, so now I will present about the hydropower plant in Malaysia. Okay. So um, for the there are twenty hydro uh, large scale hydropower plant in Malaysia that uh, that is known. Um, Sixteen of it is come from the peninsular Malaysia, and another four is at. Sabah and Sarawak. Lah. So we can see that most of the uh, almost half one, two, two, four, five, six, 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 almost eight of the power plants from 20 is come from the Cameron Highland in Pahang, which is owned by uh, TNB. And the largest Pakun Dam in Sarawak can supply for 2,400 megawatts. Okay, so next. Uh, so, well, for the mini hydropower development, 
Uh, although uh, steel hydropower plays an important role in the national electricity gener generation mix, little effort has been exerted to develop the small hydropower resource. So uh, to encourage the private sector to join so small scale power generation using renewable energy, the small renewable energy program SREP was initiated in May 2001. Under SREP, small power generation plant that utilize our renewable energy could apply to sell electricity to the national utilities such as TNB. So the, the table shown in the middle is the electricity generation and install capacity of small hydro energy by public and private license by region 2014. Uh, so from the table, we can see that the total for the mini hydro in Peninsula, Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak is 73.68 megawatt, while the unit generate is one uh one hundred eighty two thousand and sixty three megawatt hour. So the from the in the right table which is presented the installed capacity of mini hydropower station in Malaysia run by TMB, SEB and SBS. Of December two until December two thousand fourteen. Ah, uh, this data is until December two thousand fourteen, where the details is in the table shown. Okay, so now I will pass to my group member to continue continue about the policy to support the hydropower in Malaysia. So thank you, Inji. So for my part, I will discuss about about the policy to support the hydropower in Malaysia. So this is the policy or I can say that the Energy Act I found from the official Sustainable Energy Development Authority site, which is SEDA, SEDA. So I get all of this policy from this site. Okay, so you can see there is a National Renewable Energy Policy, Renewable Energy Act. But last but uh, I will skip that. So not last but not least is the fit in tariff. So I will talk about more in this fit in tariff. So next slide, please. Hello. Okay. So what is fit fit in tariff? So fit in tariff is begin as early as two thousand four. So it allows the distribution license, such as uh TNB SESB, to buy from the fit in tariff. Holders we call as the FIAS, and then the electric produced from the renewable so resources, and it will be set for the FIT rate. Okay, so according to Wong Ka Wo, uh, FIT had been successfully in driving the RE la, in our Malaysia. So over the past eight years, with ten thousand two hundred and sixty nine FIT. Applications with RE, RE capacity of uh six hundred more than six hundred megawatt la, is installed uh for commercial operation as of November two thousand nineteen. You can see that the six hundred megawatt is normally produced by a I would say la, a a big uh a, a medium capacity of the hydropower. So you can see that actually FIT is quite uh boosting our hydro electricity in malaysia isn't it so there's a link over there if you got any uh if do you want to know about more information you can uh get from there so next slide please so this is the fit rates uh you can see that for the small hydro uh normally the the rates is Giving zero point two six uh uh ring uh, zero point two six per kilowatt hour for the uh hydro energy that uh up to and including two megawatts for next uh just next this is not important I because because I just want to share uh what I get from the sites okay. So actually, if you want to know about the solar biogas or biomass uh, under the FIT, then you can go and click la, from the above. 
you can see there. So here I just, because I, I'm presenting the small hydro, so I just fo focus, focusing on the hydro energy. Okay, so next. Ah, that's all. That's all for me. Thank you. Okay, so for the cost of operation, uh, once the construction of hydro power plant is complete, uh, the cost of op operation for the hydro power plant is usually only for the maintenance only. So the cost will be relatively lo low compared to the other renewable energy source, uh, renewable energy power plant. Um, but if you including the cost of operation by the cost of construction to construct the hydro power plant, the cost of operation for hydro power plant is relatively higher than other types of renewable energy power plant uh, in, in the beginning of the operation. Lah. So the advantage of the hydro power plant is that this kind of replacement are infrequent and design lives for 30 years or more for the electromechanical equipment and 50 years or more for the risk refurbishment of pen stock and tail rays are normal. So we can saw that if even the cost of construction for the hydro power plant is, uh, is cost high, highly, but after the construction, the benefits or the, or the values that the hydro power plants bring back to us can be said at is a very huge benefits or values. Okay, so uh, this is one of the, this is the example, the, which is one, which is the largest power plant in our Malaysia, uh, the Bakot hydroelectric power plant. So uh, this power plant is have installed capacity of 2,400 megawatt, which comprising eight vertical shaft of Francis turbine of 300 megawatt each shaft. So the, Concrete phase rock fill. The concrete phase of this dam is the third highest rock fill wall in this world. While it has a 750 meter long chest, a height of 205 meter, and a fill volume of 16.75 million meter cube of water. Lah. So it's owned and operated by Sarawak Energy since 2017. Where the power intake structure is consists of thick base with 16 roller gates, and the construction cost is 7.4 billion ringgit Malaysia, while uh, the 1 billion ringgit Malaysia in this 7.4 billion is used to purchase the turbine. So, um, this figure shows the potential amount of electric city generated by the upcoming years until 2015 <coughs> as per that as predicted by the national electric supply is expected that in the future the total power that could be generated is about 30 30 000 megawatt hour in 2015 with more than 60 percent expected to be contributed by solar pv and biomass energy Okay. Oh, this is the this is the figure out just now that one is another one. So uh, this is the install capacity generation mix in 2004 from the Ministry of Energy, Green Technology of Water Keta. So uh, we can see that in this figure, uh, which means that up until 2014, the data they collected from all the power plant in Malaysia shows that there is only 15.44 out of 15.44 percent in the 30 30,875 megawatt is come from the hydropower so uh, this is the figure just now I just uh, share with you all which is that uh, they expected that in 2050, uh, the 
the total power could be generated is about 30,000 megawatt hour, which is with more than 60% expected to be contributed by solar PV and biomass energy. Lah. So you can see that the, mm, the mini hydro in the, which is the green color one, is increasing as normal until expected 2028 where it is continuous uh, with the continuous value until 2050. So now I will pass to my team member to continue about the issue and challenges. Okay, hello, my name is Zulmi and I will continue presenting the issue and challenges of hydro, hydro power plant. So the controversial uh, happened in Malaysia is uh, at Bakun Power Plant and Murun Power Plant. Bakun uh, Power Plant, Hydro Power Plant, which produce 1,771 megawatt at normal water level, is located downstream of Murun Dam. So this, this two power plant is located at one source of uh, water, which is uh, at, in, in Sarawak, they have uh, one la largest uh, river, which is Rajang River. So this both power plant is sourced by the Rajang River. But Bakun is located uh, downstream of Murun Dam. So releasing more water from Murun Dam into Bakun would allow the latter to generate more power because Morun, eh, Bakun power plant has eight turbines. Practice right, turbine of 300 megawatt each. It can generate 2,400 megawatt at full operation. While Morun power plant has four turbines. Practice right, turbine of 236 megawatt each. It can generate 944 megawatt at full operation. So, Buku. Bakun power plant is larger than Murun power plant, but Bakun power plant is located uh, below the Murun power plant. So when the Bakun want to have extra energy, the Murun power plant uh, water source need to uh, give their source to the Bakun. So it might affect the Murun uh, power gen generates. So releasing more water to Bakun power plant would hit Murun output. But due to heavy rainfall, the water level at Morun have remained high. Okay, next. So, the issue for power plant, for hydro power plant is the large hydro project do result in flooding of large area, as in case of Borneo, where it is unavoidably destructive and disruptive. Some quarters argue this must be balanced against the pressing needs of social and economic development. The two dams may cost a lot of 1,000 kilo, kilo square of rainforest, rainforest land, nearly one and a half of a land of area Singapore that is permanently submerged underwater. Over the time, soil erosion and saltation of the Reservoir creates much concern. So this is the picture of the Murun and Bakun. So Murun is located higher, which because of Murun uh, power plant is uh, much lower, so the the reservoir is much smaller compared to Bakun. Okay, next. So the current work on hydro power energy. Sarawak is the powerhouse in hydro generation. Currently operating three hydro dams in Batang Ali, Batang Ai, Bakun, and Murun, which produce 3,452 megawatt or about 73.5% of total mix in the state. For the future, for the future planning, by 2025, the under construction Baleh hydro dam would be introduced which is expected to generate another 1,285 megawatt to the state. By then, 
Sarawak is expected to generate over 7,000 megawatt compared to the current 4,700 megawatts. Next. So this is the uh, okay. This is the location for Balai uh, Hydro Power Plant, the new power plant that uh, they want to put in Sarawak. Okay. Next. So the conclusion, although Malaysia has vast hydro power potential, but there is some impedance limits the development of hydro power plant in the country. Long clearance and approval process time hinder the, the development of hydro or small hydro project due to available fossil fuel decrease year by year and also the big environment Im impact from using it to generate electricity. Nature have to make all attempt to accelerate the development and implementation of small hydro and more attention must be focused on the target of specific installation capacity to, to promote small hydro project, non-governmental and governmental organizations should, should take more proactive steps. At the same time, the government could arrange training program for hydro installation, operation and maintenance. The local manufacturer could also encourage hydro generation by manufacturing and marketing related components domestically. Research and development activities are necessary to select the suitable hydro turbines in a specific state, specific site, and identify key points for small hydro installation in Malaysia. Okay, that's all for us.